So before I get started, if you wouldn't mind indulging me, I want to tell you a little bit of sto a little story about how I really got started in this business. I think it'll help you understand uh, why I do what I do and why I'm so passionate about it. So it was about 25 years ago. I was sitting in my daughter's room. It was about about three o'clock in the morning. My wife was sleeping. My son was sleeping. The whole house was super quiet. Um, it was awesome time. I was sitting in uh, my daughter's rocking chair. Uh, doing her night feeding. <clears throat> I really love that time because it's time that her and I spent together, uh, no interruptions. And at the time I was working as a CPA at Deloitte. So it was really the only really good quality time I got to spend with my newborn baby. But for some reason, one night was going to be different. You see, instead of enjoying that time with her, I started thinking about what was going on in my life, what I wanted out of life, what I wanted out of our family's life. See, I knew I wanted to put my kids through school without racking up tons and tons of debt. I knew I wanted to be able to stop working so hard. I mean, the fact that I'm enjoying my only time with my daughter at 3 a.m. should uh, tell you that. I wanted to spend more time with my family. And of course, I wanted to retire, right? Problem was, I couldn't figure out how I was going to be able to save enough money to do those things. Like many of you, I was working a ton and I thought I was so successful, but I couldn't save any money. I tried to invest the money I did save. But the stock, every time I invested in the stock market, it seemed to crash. And my investments didn't have any real cash flow. I was really getting frustrated. And it kind of ruined that time with her that night and for a few nights there. See, I did everything I was supposed to do. I went to school. I got a decent job. And I still couldn't reach my goals. It was at that moment that I decided it was time that I solved this problem. Up until then, I dabbed a little bit in real estate. But I didn't really know a whole lot about it. So I spent a ton of time and thousands of dollars trying to figure out how to re make real money investing in real estate. So I'm happy to report it took me a while, but I finally got the courage to, uh, to invest in a total of three small apartment buildings over the next couple of years. Now, here's, here's the important part. What, next, what happened next to me is the part that just blew my mind. You see, three years later... I sold those properties, and for the first time in my life, I had real money in my bank account. I had more than I had made more than half a million dollars investing in real estate, and that was while I was working full time at Deloitte as a CPA. I can tell you, it was like a massive weight was just lifted off my shoulders. You see, before I had no clue how I was going to put my kids through school without racking up tons and tons of debt. I had no clue how I was going to be able to stop working and do all the things that I wanted to do, let alone retire, before I had to try to rely on the stock market to reach all my financial goals. But guess what? Now I had a plan. But not only did I have a plan, but I had a plan that I knew would work. See, my name is Ken Gee, as she said. I'm a CPA, and I'm the founder of KRI Partners. Over the last 25 years, we have helped hundreds of people just like you create massive wealth investing in multifamily real estate. You are going to hear me say this over and over. I believe that passively investing in real estate is the single best way to make enough money to do all the things you want to do and create the life you want for you and your family. So in the next 15 or so minutes, maybe 20, I'm going to talk to you about the four things that took me years to figure out so that you can see how you can invest in real estate just like I do to reach your financial goals. So let me share my screen here and get right to it. I have to read my disclaimer. As you know, uh, everybody here is investors, so I'm sure you're familiar with this. Please note that investing in real estate and other financial in in instruments involves a degree of risk and potential loss of some or all of your principal. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but suffice it to say that we do want you to seek your own investment advice and your own legal counsel before making any type uh, of investment like this. All right, let's get to the good stuff. All right, three benefits of investing in real estate. Real estate brings cash flow, appreciation, and tax benefits. Let's talk about cash flow. <clears throat> in our world, we have lots of tenants paying rent. Those people are paying rent. Those people that pay us rent are generally from different types of employment, different industries. So we get an awesome diversified revenue stream. In our world, our expenses are fairly predictable. They basically repeat month after month after month. So as long as you get the management right, 
the revenue should always exceed the expenses. That's positive cash flow. That's cash flow that is paid directly to you, the investor. Number two, appreciation. And this is where it really is. Real estate appreciates over time, but it's very deliberate. It's because cash flow increases over time. It's that predictability that I really love about multifamily real estate. I know that if I can make the cash flow of a property increase, I know there's a really good chance that it's going to be worth more because people will always be willing to pay for cash flow. Number three, tax benefits. Cash flow that we distribute to you, we do it quarterly. It is not taxed when you receive it. Um, secondly, you get, and, and it's because of the depreciation deductions that you get on your tax return, even though the asset is appreciating in value. There's only a few parts, uh, uh, types of investing that Congress uh, and the government gives you huge tax benefits for. Real estate is definitely one of them. So the tax losses that we generate because of the depreciation may flow to your personal tax return. And then when we sell our assets, the worst case scenario for you is you're going to get capital gains tax, which generally enjoys lower tax rates. And then let's just think about multifamily in general. Let's forget about those three benefits. I mean, if you think about what we do, it's really easy to understand. Everybody needs a place to live, right? Everybody knows somebody or is living in an apartment complex at some point probably in their life. It's based on a proven investment thesis. We are not reinventing the wheel here. And that's important to me because I want to do something that I know uh, I can be successful at. It's real. It's an amazing hedge against inflation. And we can talk about that later. And then you can build massive wealth by investing in multifamily real estate. And I'm going to illustrate some of that for you. All right, I want to talk about, and this is probably the most important part of this presentation. And that is why now? Uh, interest rates, this is not a secret, interest, interest rates have been rising, right? A lot of people that are relatively inexperienced and didn't understand, uh, haven't been around that long, they put variable rate debt on their on their deals when they bought them over the last few years, and they didn't go out far enough to protect themselves. And maybe they didn't uh, project enough increase in cash flow to offset an increase in interest rates. Well, we know that some of those loans are going to come due. We know that some of those folks are going to have to buy new rate caps and things like that uh, to deal with it. And it's going to create a distressed seller situation. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen, start happening in first quarter of 23, probably more in the second quarter of 23, unless rates just plummet and go back down. And I doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> Excuse me. Secondly, there's going to be less competition for deals. It's always tougher to get deals done when, when we have uh, higher interest rates, when we have the risk of a recession. A lot of um, a lot of the people that are less experienced, they kind of go away for a while because they're nervous. They're not, they don't understand how to deal with some of these risks. So that makes less competition for deals. We love that because that leaves the more experienced buyers in the market. And of course, brokers, in order to get their deals done, are always going to favor the more experienced buyers, especially now. Um, first quarter, uh, next, next reason why now first quarter generally brings uh, much more volume. Fourth quarter is very, very slow historically because people are just trying to get things wrapped up by year end. We rarely see new deals in fourth quarter. So first quarter, uh, we expect to see a whole new uh, set of deal flow. And finally, it, it appears as though rates have somewhat stabilized, especially with the low CPI number that we saw today. Um, I think I saw before I jumped on rate of the 10 year was at uh, 346. So it's been fairly stable. That's been a big deal for us because in our world, it's hard for us to go under contract to buy a deal if we're worried that rates are going to fluctuate 50, 75 basis points in the 60 to 75 days it takes us to get the deal done. So it seems like we have some stability there. So this is setting us up for a first quarter, second quarter, massive buying opportunity um, at least that's what we believe. So that's why now is the, is a really, really good time to get into this business. You know, investors tell me every single day that there is just no good place to put their money right now. And, and I said this before, I believe, especially now, there's no greater investment than multifamily real estate. I'm going to give you throughout my presentation here a couple of real examples that we've done. Um, they're, they're actual deals. Uh, that have been done by us and closed. Um, bear with me here. I just got to move some of my controls around. 
Stand by. There we go. All right. Um, Coachman Club Apartments. It's a deal we did back in 2015. Uh, we bought that deal at 72 units in Clearwater, Florida, great part of Florida. We bought it for about six million bucks. Um, it took a million for an equity to get the deal done. We sold it about two and a half years later for a little over eight million. Now here, you're going to hear me talk about this throughout this presentation. Remember I talked about the predictability of if I'm able to increase cash flow that I should be able to see appreciation and value. In that deal, we moved rents from just under 800 to over 1100 a month. So that allowed us to sell that property in two and a half years. And our investor annual ROI was $30,000. To put it in cash terms for you, in two and a half years, if you initially invested $100,000, you would have probably gotten back about $175,000 on that deal. So it gives you a good idea as to how our deals work and uh, um, how, how you will make money uh, over a period of time. Now, the question is, how should you invest, right? So many people say, hey, I want to get into real estate. I want to buy a single, a double, a fourplex. Maybe I'll live in one half. And, and you can do that. But when people, most people take a really hard look at their life and their situation and the commitments that they currently have, they usually really don't have time to do that. So most people realize that they should invest passively. Now, that's important because that brings me to the next topic that I want to talk about that I think is extremely important for everybody to, to have. I have four rules when I'm thinking about people investing passively in anything for that matter, but especially in real estate. You want you want to follow these four rules. If you do, you will go a long way to reducing the risk that you're going to get with a sponsor uh, that uh, isn't going to and the, and the investment not go well. There's no guarantees, but these four rules will certainly put you in a good spot. The first and most important, they got to have experience. And of course, I mean, it seems obvious, but the reason why is what's important. You see, you need a management team in place that you're investing with that has been around the block a few times, has been through real estate cycles, and is fairly well prepared to figure out how to deal with whatever comes next, right? We never saw a pandemic coming. We didn't see massive inflation coming. So you want to have you want to have your money with an experienced manager who knows how to deal with whatever happens to come next. Give you an example, our management team's managed over 16,000 units over the last 25 years. What's really important here, just don't let somebody else learn on your dime. There are a lot of new people in this business, so please just be careful because they haven't gone through multiple real estate cycles like an experienced operator has. Rule number two, I want you to make sure they have a long track record that kind of goes uh, hand in hand with experience. Um, insist on reviewing their track record. We've done 18 deals worth about $125 million. Our investors have, you know, their returns have been 20, 25, even 30% plus annual returns. If you click on the QR code uh, or scan the QR code or click on the link there, you will be taken to our Verivest verified track record. So we hired a company to come in and look under the hood and vet all of the our entire track record. So it's all been uh, already vetted for you. Uh, we had to send them settlement statements and tax returns and bank statements. I mean, it was a very, very ugly process, especially when you think about 25 years worth of deal. So insist that they have a long track record and that they're willing to uh, give you the ability to somehow verify that. Rule number three, they have to put you first. This gets a little harder to deal with um, because it really depends on the terms of the deal. So what you have to do is you have to look at the PPM, private placement memorandum, and take a look at their fees and the terms of their investment. What I, here's, what to, here's what I believe. I believe that any profit bonus should be performance-based, and it should be paid at the end. For example, in our fund, you'll see this in a minute, but we have a preferred return. You get all your capital back, and only then do we get to the uh, to the to the profit bonus, which is an 80-20 split. So ask yourself a question here, and you should be in good shape. Is it possible for the investment firm to do well and to you not do well? Number four, you want to make sure that whoever you invest with is transparent. I know this seems obvious, but you'd be surprised at what we hear. Uh, we issue quarterly financials. We get uh, our investors get a profit and loss, a balance sheet, a rent roll, 
And then we write up a narrative. I write it personally that tells you exactly what's going on with each property in the fund, where it's at, what our plan is, if we're renovating it, where does that stand, so on and so forth. We'll tell you vacancies and delinquencies and all this, all the stuff on the ground that you really kind of want to know how your investment is going. So uh, additionally, if you pick up the phone and you call uh, the firm that you're invested with, you should be able to talk to somebody that really understands what's going on with that property. So I think it's only fair that you, you should expect thoughtful, timely responses. So follow those four rules. And I believe it's good. They're going to take you a long way to make keeping you out of trouble in terms of picking a sponsor. All right. So let's talk about how our investors make money. This is our investment thesis. And it really, really is an important part of, uh, of why we make money because every component of this is super deliberate. Um, first of all, we buy apartment communities, right? Where there's a reason we do apartments because they're the lowest risk asset I can find in the real estate world. In growing areas, we'll talk about why, in good neighborhoods that with some physical improvements and some management expertise, we can make them more valuable than they are today. You see, the improvements that we make, I'm going to go back to the cash flow thing now, allow us to raise rents, rent to better quality tenants. And because of that, we're able to significantly improve the cash flow of the asset. So that's our investment thesis. And I think it's critical uh, because it, it, it basically is how we make money. Let me go through a couple more examples of deals. These are deals that we did full cycle. So these, these are not projections. These are real deal. Uh, been there, done that. Investors have been paid. This is an, an awesome deal. Bell Rive Club Apartments in Jacksonville. Bought it for about seven and a half million. Sold it for a little over 13 million. That took us three and a half years. Uh, and we moved rents there from 750 to nine and a quarter. So our investor annual ROI in that deal was 22% over three and a half years. So 22% per year for three and a half years. In that deal, if you would have invested $100,000 over that three and a half year period, you would have gotten back 177. So just again, just trying to illustrate how the cash flows work in these deals. Whispering Oaks, and this is the last deal that we'll go over. Whispering Oaks apartment, little 75 unit property in Orange City, Florida. Probably have no clue where that is. It's a small little community northeast of Orlando. I love it because it's right off I-4. I also love it because if you notice, they're townhomes. And I love, love townhomes uh, because people love to live in them. We bought that little deal for a little under 5 million bucks. Sold it for $8 million after two years. And it's because we move rents from 696 to 850. So we move rents quite a bit. The investor return there is 36% annual return. So again, let's look cash in, cash out. If you invested 100 grand with us in that deal, in two years, that was actually two years in a month, uh, you would have gotten back 172,000 uh, bucks. Not bad at all. All right, let's talk about the types of real estate deals, right? The syndicators buying process is, is really important. So you're, you're going to look at syndicators and you're going to look at fund managers if you're considering investing here. The difference is syndic is really very simple. The syndicators go find the deal, put it under contract, and then they try to raise the money in the short amount of time and get, get enough equity raised to close the deal uh, before, you know, in time uh, under the contract. That's that's a challenge sometimes. We know because we've been syndicators. We've done that uh, for many, many years. Uh, the problem is sellers know that the syndicator has to go raise the money still. So they're a little bit hesitant to go under contract with a syndicator until they know that they know that that equity is in hand and that they can uh, get the deal closed. So we we buy in competitive markets. Those syndic, you know, we're we're standing next to other syndicators. If we're only a syndicator, it's hard to set ourselves apart other than our experience. Now compare that to what the the model that we've gone to a couple of years ago, and it's the fund managers buying process. Now let's talk about that because we actually flipped that. So syndicator got the deal, then went and got the money. We put the money in front of the deal, so we are out now raising money for fund number two. And once we raise that, we will then go deploy that capital into deals. Now, this is obvious, but it's, it's, it's so true. When we put the money in front of the deal, we become massively stronger as a buyer. And people just absolutely want to do deals with us. The brokers want to find us deals because they know we have money in hand. They know that we're experienced and they know that we're going to get that deal closed because that's what sellers and brokers care about most is the certainty of close. So now we don't have to pay up 
to differentiate ourselves necessarily uh, to get the deal. In fact, the fund, the last fund that we did, the first deal never saw the market and the last two deals, we were not the highest bidder. So proves our, our buying model, no question. So a little bit more about why we like the fund. Um, as an investor, I like it because you can keep your funds invested until we call the capital. That's really important, right? So if you signed up today, you're not sending me any money today. You've just made a commitment to send me money when we call the deals and find, call the capital and find the deals. So you can stay invested. Secondly, we already talked about this. Sellers love invest, uh, buyers with money. Again, we get better deals. Um, you, most people don't think about this, but if you think about just the diversification that you get inside a fund, We'll talk about our last fund, but our last fund saw three deals, Tallahassee, Daytona, and Bradenton. Massively different properties, very different neighborhoods, very different areas. Love that diversification inside the fund. Lower transaction costs, you only have one set of documents, right? Every time we, as syndicators have to redo docs every single time they buy a property. We don't have to do that to go out and raise money every single time because we're doing it one time for multiple deals. And then finally, uh, sponsor gets paid last, truly last in a syndication. Hopefully the syndicator is being paid last. But when you buy into a fund environment like we're in, we actually have to return all your capital that you have invested in the entire fund before we start to get our bonus. So we truly wait till the end to get our bonus because I, I strongly, strongly believe that's what we should be doing. Current fund terms, so we we underwrite to an annual return of 15%. We're always trying to beat that, and I showed you three deals that blew that away. Um, I didn't cherry pick those deals. Those just happened to be the last three deals that we turned. So we underwrite to 15% with the intent that we're going to beat it. You're going to get a preferred return, so that's a component of that annual return. So you're going to get a 6% preferred return that paid quarterly. Then when you get your money back, so when we sell the assets, as long as you've gotten all your preferred return that you're due and we've returned your capital, then we go to an 80-20 split. Uh, some A little uh, benefit that's kind of on the side that most people don't think about, if we need extra money to do a deal, you have the right of re first refusal on those side raises at, at the same terms. And that's really a big deal because sometimes it's really hard to even get in these deals. As an investor, you already kind of have your marker in the ground there. So you get first shot at it. Minimum investment in our fund is 100 grand, and uh, it's uh, open to accredited investors only. Otherwise, I couldn't be here talking to you about uh, about uh, our fund. We generally hold our properties three to five years. Uh, we are a value add fund, so our goal is to go in, add our value, leave some for the next guy, and then sell that asset, and then turn that money. That way, that money gets back into your hands, so you can decide then whether or not you want to continue to stay invested or something else in your life might have changed. That gives you the ability to make a different decision. Um, target markets, we're just looking for growth markets. Uh, it's Southeast, Southwest. We're heavy in Florida right now. We're, we're continuing to try to expand that market. On the fee side, we're generally at the lower end of the fee structure. So 1% acquisition disposition fee and a 1.5% asset management fee. We're not here for the fees. Uh, that's why we don't even set them at market. We set them below market because I just... You know, I just, it takes people to do this work and we just don't want to lose money on that. We're here for the profit bonus at the end, uh, just like you are, no doubt. All right. So how do you get started doing this? What do you do? What do you need to do? It's really simple. Uh, click uh, the link, scan the QR code. What's important is that that will take you to a page with just all the information that you need to see. Uh, another replay of a similar webinar to this. So you'll get to hear from some investors that have invested with us in the past who kind of give you their uh, unscripted experience. Uh, and when you see them, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, and if if uh, if this sounds like something that's right for you, then you need to jump on an investment call with us. Uh, the goal of that call is, is simple, and that is to understand your situation and try to figure out what you're trying to accomplish because it is really, really important to me that what you are trying to do matches up with what I know our investment is able to provide. And as long as there's a match, we can go forward. If there isn't, that's totally cool. Um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to have a mismatch here. It's uh, too important to me that we have a successful relationship. I will tell you whether you have a hundred thousand, a half a million, five million, I know our fund 
uh, can help you reach your financial goals. I'll leave you with this before we get to Q&A, uh, and it's not going to surprise you. I believe very strongly that you have to be financially independent so you can give your family exactly what they deserve. You've got to be financially independent so you can, you can take control of your life and stop working so much. You've just got to be financially independent. You really don't have a choice. Let's reach out, see if we can do for you what we have done for our investors and my family over the years. So with that...